Ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the Friday edition of Prime News. Thanks for choosing my media prime. We are live uh, from Fengudrom Bange in the country's uh, economic capital. My name is Genda Peldrin Blanche King, president of the National Assembly. Kava Yege Jibril has condemned the killings in the northwest and southwest regions of uh, the country. He is equally uh, condemned violent acts perpetrated by unidentified men in these two English speaking uh, regions of the country, which he uh, terms acts of barbarism. This was at the open of the third ordinary session for the year 2020, which took place yesterday. Details with Audrey Zatsa in the following report. A crime contra l'humanité, aucune cause au monde ne saurait justifier une telle barbarie. Je dis trop, c'est trop. It is on this tone that the President of the National Assembly, Kava Yege Jibril, began his speech yesterday, November 12, condemning the atrocities perpetrated on children and women in the restive regions of the country. To him, nothing can justify such barbarism. Speaking as concerns the agenda of the November 2020 Parliament session, emphasis was laid on the crisis situation in the country and the world and the adoption of the budget of the Republic of Cameroon for the 2020 fiscal year. Cette session s'ouvre dans un contexte marqué par des crises multiples dans notre pays et dans le monde. Au Cameroun, la crise sécuritaire reste lancinante dans les régions du nord-ouest, du sud-ouest et de l'extrême nord. To him, the finance bill to be tabled before the National Assembly for consideration should be realistic and tailored to the demands of the nation's actions and resilience. He equally spoke on the fact that government's action to combat terrorism and completion of major infrastructure development projects are awaited in 2021. And talking about acts of terrorism, he urges the youth concerned to leave the bushes and go for decent jobs in President Paul Biya's plan for them. Saluting the efforts put by the National Commission on the promotion of bilingualism and multiculturalism, the conclusion of his speech was an urge to the Prime Minister Head of Government to brainstorm on the question of the COVID-19 pandemic and calling on the government to support Cameroon's organization of the CHAN 2021. Meanwhile, at the Congress Hall, the first Deputy Speaker of the Senate was not indifferent as to the other issues raised by Kava Yege Jibril. Abu Bakari Abdullah equally condemned the killings in Kumba. He urges the friendly nation harboring the terrorists to hand them over to the Cameroonian justice. Equally that, the 2021 budget should take into account the COVID-19 and the CHAN 2021. Organizers of the first edition of Pan-African Conference and Cultural Festival have braved the press on the entrepreneurial and economic advantages of uh, the conference. They underline the importance of the conference today during a press conference at their headquarters in uh, Bonaberry, Douala. Lasha Kinsley reports. United Africa for Economic Empowerment, UNAFI, today, November 13, briefed the press on the upcoming Pan-African Conference and Cultural Festival to take place as from the 9th to the 11th of December 2020 in Douala, Cameroon. The President General of the organization, Professor Mark Antoni, highlights the importance of the upcoming event. The importance of this particular program cannot be overemphasized, considering the fact that for a very long period of time, uh, not only Cameroonians but Africans had been actually going through a lot of poverty, uh, a stricken situation. And one of the things that we necessarily need to be looking for are solutions to problems, not complaints. They are struggling to use this occasion to, as a means to transform the minds of Africans and Cameroonians to be precise in order for them to be able to become productive. We expect to see that at the end of the day, let people who leave that particular conference have something to give. Professor Mark equally says it's high time Africans stopped the blame game and be productive. It is not how much complaints we complain, but it is what we do with what happens to us. So people need to come there to learn their how to come out of the poverty-stricken situation in which we find ourselves. 
Dr. Nick Nguyen, a social entrepreneur and member of UNAFI, also underlines the entrepreneurial and economic advantages of the upcoming conference to the entire African continent. Poverty is due, number one, to our attitude, number two, to our kind of education. And it's, it's time for me here to say, before I forget it, that the, the education that we have all over Africa is, is no good, is useless. That education is at the bottom or, or is the source of our problems. And you might want to believe that the white man gave us this kind of education so that we just stay in our darkness. And it is the darkness today, when you see the violence all over Africa, is the fruit of that darkness. Instead of us killing and fight, fighting and killing each other over pieces of bread, we are taking you into the into into into, into the in, in, into the, into that world, into that place where you will see how you can fine tune yourself, get new skills, get a new understanding, understand problems, understand how to solve problems, understand how to create wealth, understand what 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 to do so that the enterprises can can, can run. The conference will also bring together some renowned Pan-Africanists such as Professor Plo Lumumba and Dr. Dennis Cody. Insecurity and theft is on a steady rise in the economic capital of uh, the country. A Douala a suspected bike thief caught recently in Bonaberry was paid after receiving public beating. He was well beaten and almost burned to death when the bike owner intervened with a plea on his behalf. This is one of the numerous stories of theft recorded in Douala within a month. And away from VAT, some workers of the Cameroon Development Corporation observed a strike action yesterday demanding the payment of accrued salaries owed them by the corporation for close to two years now. They were at the entrance of the Butter Palms estate displaying messages that express their dissatisfaction. Details with Kumar Norimbu. <laughs> Some workers of the Cameroon Development Corporation, under the banner of Bota Palms Estate, yesterday, November 12th, went on a sit-down strike, blocking the entrance of the office, demanding the payment of salaries owed them by the corporation. The workers carried black cards, carrying their grievances, which they posted on the gate of the Bota Engineering Workshop. Our problem for you now say, would they ask for a 20 months salary for CBC? We don't do work for long. Really for long, we don't persevere. But no statement, not the be make up. Nothing they need to talk. People just report their work. When time they reach, we the year for social media, say they don't come pay with the remote salary. After we the say that they pay with every month, we will not see five francs. It would appear as if their grievances fell on deaf ears, as the management did not bother to send representatives to address the grieved workers. So how could you, in particular me, I get to begin the way to university, up to the day house. Because when you put them there, their house is going to be there. Of which, this is only 1.1 million, they only. Even if you have money, how many of you can get to the day house? Say only, say only, that company will work on CBC. All the counselors are so old. Now you work for 15 years, you get that from the day house. 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 You get that for this old woman, she has been working with the CDC for 43 years and has nothing to write home about. <laughs> Social security for workers is also a major concern as workers have been left on their own even when they are sick. You are sick, you go for hospital. Mess not the they ride you mess. They will tell you say go buy. They know they pay you. Who say you will take the money? You go buy that mess. Picking that they die. You die. 
What can I say? They don't know. They die away. CDC, they owe their salary. If you owe salary, all people they don't die. And the money they. When some more money, we hear they say they don't bring money for CDC. They, they take and go pay a contractor. Who be the contractor? Only them big, big people for all. It is worth mentioning that this is not the first time that CDC workers from different estates have taken to the streets demanding the payment of their salaries. The Minister of Agriculture in the early 2018 paid a walking visit to CDC and promised the management that issues of salary will be a bygone as the government was going to pay subvention money to support CDC from collapsing. Surprisingly enough, two years after the Minister's visit, CDC is still dancing with one leg. The management of Kulu Memorial Comprehensive High School has reassured parents, teachers and students that necessary measures have been put in place for classes to effectively resume come uh, Tuesday, November 17. This was during a press uh, briefing called by the institution. It is worth uh, noting Kulu Memorial Comprehensive High School was attacked by armed men recently molesting uh, students as uh, reporter Kumonore tells us. The proprietor of Kulu Memorial Comprehensive High School, Mr. Dwala Kulunje, has accepted to carry the blame of the November 4th attack on his school for not providing adequate security to the school. He made this confession during a press briefing organized by the school's management to reassure parents, teachers and students of the commitment taken by the school's management to ensure that classes effectively resume in the weeks ahead. Having learned a lesson from the November 4th tragic incident, the school's management has decided to reinforce certain security measures, amongst which are the completion of a fence around the school premise to prevent intruders from entering the school, the recruitment of security guards to look after the school premises thoroughly well from within and out, the acquisition of a school bus to ferry students at particular points to the school and bring them back home. Finally, the speedy up of the electrification process of the school. He further reassured parents and students that all those students who lost their uniforms, textbooks and school bags as a result of the incident will be given new uniforms and textbooks to continue schooling. We have uh, set up the way forward and uh, uh, we say Tuesday and we know that it's going to start. Schools are class that will start on Tuesday. They might start immediately as usual but I'm, I'm telling the public through you that the school will not shut down. It put uh, heavy bodied people around the place to watch the, the school uh, from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. The outside and the inside. Yeah, so it's like uh, the students will be under siege because of these people who are there, who will be paid for their security. The principal, Ms. Ngay Chantelin, regretted the unfortunate situation where teachers and students were bundled in one class, stripped naked and molested. She, however, refuted claims or rumors that some teachers were raped as she personally confined to some of the victims. These teachers were not raped. They were stripped naked, yes. They were not raped. Petrol was poured on them. The, the same go in every room, there must be an atom of, of truth. I think the only truth there is that I took a teacher to the hospital at about 4 in the evening when she called that the petrol that they pour on her is like it has some effect on her body. I called her to the hospital that she meet me and my one. We went to my one, she did some consultation, they did tests. Former Ghanaian President J.J. Rollins is no more. His death was announced yesterday. He died after a brief illness at the age of 73. Etape Kanteng tells us the life and death of J.J. Rollins. A monument du panafricanisme s'est éteint. Né le 22 juin 1947 à Accra, d'un père écossais et d'une mère ghanienne, Diri John Rawlings, entre à l'académie militaire en 1967, qu'il quitte plus tard pour entrer dans l'armée de l'air, où il progresse comme pilote en 1969. Une décennie plus tard, il mène son premier coup d'État en exécutant plusieurs anciens chefs de l'État et généraux de l'armée pour corruption. 
Les organisations internationales l'avaient porté critique, mais l'homme était resté droit dans ses bouts en les répliquant qu'il tuait pour le bien de son pays. En tant qu'officier supérieur de l'armée de l'air ghanéenne, il renverse son gouvernement militaire en 1979 et passe le pouvoir entre les mains d'un dirigeant civil. Deux années plus tard, il lance un second coup d'État et il est à la tête de la junte militaire jusqu'à l'introduction d'élections multipartistes en 1992, date à laquelle il est élu président pour la première fois. Il inaugure une longue période de stabilité politique en introduisant les réformes de libre marché. Envoyé spécial de l'Union africaine, Diri Hualins, 63 ans en ce moment, a été chargé de mobiliser le continent et le reste de la communauté internationale dans le but d'assurer leurs responsabilités et contributions pour la paix. Il est donc présenté comme celui qui a initié le Ghana à la démocratie. Pour le président de la Commission de l'Union africaine, l'Afrique a perdu un pilier du panafricanisme et un charismatique homme d'État. Ce dernier a présenté ses condoléances sincères à sa famille, au peuple et au gouvernement du Ghana. Ce décès intervient à quelques semaines de la présidentielle qui va s'organiser le 7 décembre 2020 dans le pays. Still in Africa, conflict in Tigray has killed uh, hundreds and sent more into other countries. According to Amnesty International, if it is uh, confirmed the casualties is committed or committed by a party to the conflict, this could amount to war crimes. These and more up ahead in the following report. It's time for African Updates. Ghana's former leader, Jerry Rollins, is no more. According to President Nana Kufuado, J.J. Rollins died on Thursday morning at Kolebu Teaching Hospital in the capital, Accra, Ghana, where he had been receiving treatment after a short illness. J.J. Rollins was born in 1947 to a Scottish father and a Ghanaian mother. Trained as an Air Force officer, he came to power in 1979 after leading his first coup and then transferring power to civilian role soon after. In December 1981, he staged a second coup and was Ghana's military leader until he introduced multi-party elections in 1992, which returned the country to democracy. He won the 1993 presidential elections and served two elected four-year terms, leaving office in 2001. Rollins handed over power to John Kufo of the opposition party, who had defeated him in that year's election. After stepping down, he remained active in Ghanaian politics while serving in various international diplomatic posts, including as African Union's representative in Somalia. Late J.J. Rollins is survived by his wife, three daughters and one son. President Akufuado has ordered that all flags around the country be lowered to have mass for seven days of national mourning. Campaigns for upcoming elections in December have equally been suspended. According to United Nations reports, conflict in Tigray has killed hundreds and sent hundreds more into Sudan. Fighting between Ethiopian government forces and rebellious northern leaders, as reported by Amnesty International, has led to the death of civilians and, if confirmed as committed by a party to the conflict, would amount to war crimes. And there is a risk the situation was spiral totally out of control, leading to heavy casualties and destruction, as well as mass displacement within Ethiopia and across borders. Morocco says its troops have launched operation on the southern border of Western Sahara to end provocations by pro-independence fighters. The Polisario warned on Monday that it will regard a three-decade-old ceasefire with Morocco as over. It warned that the entry of any Moroccan military, security or civil entity into the Bova zone will be considered as a flagrant aggression to which the Sahara side will respond vigorously in self-defense and to defend territorial sovereignty. In recent weeks, sources confirmed Sahara separatists had set up roadblocks and stopped passage across the border. The Sahara government also holds the United Nations and the Security Council in particular is responsible for the safety and security of Sahara civilians. 
The month of November is observed as Lung Cancer Awareness Month. This life-threatening disease affects over 2 million people globally and records over 1 million deaths yearly. Causes include smoking, family history, amongst the others. Lung cancer has two major types, with the non-small cell lung cancer accounting for 80 to 85 percent of all lung cancer-related cases. With an estimated 1 billion smokers across the globe, the disease is the leading cause of cancer-related deaths worldwide, according to statistics. Thanks for being with us. We've come to the end of today's edition of Prime News on My Major Prime. The news was produced by Ewane Airline Olinga, coordinated by Faith Tata Berenio. My name is Genda Pelgin Blanche King. Stay tuned to My Major Prime at 7 p.m. Cameroon time. Prime Hour will be live with Kim Leonard and his analysts. Good night. Happy weekend.